Please stand. As we begin our service this morning, we begin by tolling our bell eight times, one for each decade of life that God blessed Joyce with. We begin together by singing our processional hymn, How Great Thou Art.
congregation may be seated, and at this time I'd like to invite forward Joyce's daughter, Kay, to share some words on behalf of the family here this morning. Good morning, and I thank you all for being here to help us celebrate the life of my mom, our mom, Joyce. And mom went home, her eternal home, on March 3rd. I know that our dad and our brother Lenny, her mom and dad and other family members, together with Jesus and all of the heavenly angels were singing and welcoming her home. And I knew you know, our dad passed away less than a year ago and they spent over 71 years together and I knew that mom and dad wouldn't want too much time alone without each other. In the last several months, our mom had dementia. It was hard on mom and they were very difficult. It's good to know that she is happy and she's with her loved ones. And it is good to know that our mom and dad will be there in heaven waiting and also welcoming us to our home one day. Our mom was definitely a multi-talented lady. She had a green thumb, and her flowers, out, it, both inside and outside of the house, were just amazing. And she passed that green thumb on to our brother Paul, and Paul made and designed and made the beautiful wreath that um, surrounds mom's urn this morning. I still see her in my mind, as I'm sure my brothers do, watering her flowers outside every summer evening, and she would be doing this until dark. She also raised African violets in the basement. She had hundreds, and they were magnificent. And she would start most of those plants from one single leaf. She also loved crafting. She crafted many different things at home, and she even would sell at craft sales. She made cabbage patch style dolls, and most of her grandchildren, when she was making dolls, got, would have a doll for, that she made special for them. And I'm sure there, I see some of them smiling now because they're remembering their dolls. She loved decorating inside and outside the house for holidays, and their Christmas lights were always spectacular and beautiful. And our brother Dean is continuing that at home. They also passed the Christmas decorations down to my husband Daryl and myself and my brother Glenn and his wife Meryl because we also have quite the Christmas displays every year outside. She would work on the farm, especially during the summers, helping with baling hay. Mom and I were usually on the wagon pulling the bales off the baler and stacking them. And anyone that was unfortunate enough to be in the hay mow Taking bales off the elevator knows you could not keep up to how fast mom could put those bales on the elevator to go into the hay mow. We also contracted pickles during the summer. As kids, we hated picking those pickles. But, and we'd always complain, but not mom. She was out there in that patch picking pickles all the time, and she would always make sure when she was outside, she'd have her wide brim straw hat on so she could protect her face from the sun. And we know that, you know, and that was where mom had a beautiful, beautiful complexion, even up until the day that she passed. And I believe my mom, our mom, was exceptionally beautiful. I always say that mom was Elizabeth Taylor beautiful. And she would never go anywhere without fixing herself up. But her beauty was natural, both inside and outside. And she always wanted to be impeccably dressed. And she loved her bling. And you'll see that all of the girls in the family, from me down to the great grandkids, have a little bit of mom's bling on today. We're all wearing one of her pins. And the boys, if you look in the suit, it, their suit coats have one of mom's handkerchiefs in today. Our mom was an awesome historian. 
She would always tell us stories from her past about her home, her parents, her grandparents, and other family members in relation. And when she told you a story, you could see the picture in your mind, and you would actually feel as if you were there too. And she was always telling us stories about all kinds of relation, about the Rose family and how we were related to everybody in Wayside and the Morrison area. And she loved animals, especially cats and dogs, especially dogs. She had many dogs and cats for pets throughout the years. And she and dad always took excellent care of them. She worried about her pets while she was at Rennes, always asking, are they okay? Are, are the dogs okay? And we would always reassure her they were fine, not to worry that Dean was home taking excellent care of them. And Paul and Joy would always bring their dogs to see mom. And she was so happy to have some dogs there to visit with her. And sometimes her, um, her dogs, Daisy and Pansy, would be able to come and visit and spend some time with her. And even on special days where other people would bring pets, they would visit with mom. And she loved it. She loved having those dogs there. And her mom actually had a very tremendous good faith in God. She prayed every day, and she taught all of us to pray and would pray with us, uh, with us each day as we grew up. And when the grandkids were there staying overnight, she would say prayers with them, too. In fact, if any of us in the family felt we needed an extra prayer, we would always say, call Grandma, because we knew she had an in with God. And let me tell you, our mom was a stickler for neat and clean. It is my, mom, it is my personal opinion that mom was the epitome of cleanliness is next to godliness. I'm sure all of the grandkids remember grandma giving them a bowl to catch any crumbs that might fall while they were eating cookies at grandma's house. And in fact, I'm guessing, but I'm thinking that right after Mom and Dad met each other in heaven, Mom asked Dad, are your hands clean? Did you wash your hands? Our mom was a perfect mom. She was loving, loving unconditionally, and always excellent at taking care of her family. We miss her. We will continue to miss her, but we know how happy she is and we wait for the day when we will all be together again. Thank you, Kay. Beautifully said. As we begin our service, we hear a reading of Joyce's Christian obituary found on the inside cover of the bulletin. Our Savior Jesus Christ has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Let us remember with thanksgiving what God has done through his servant, Joyce Perizak. Joyce was born April 11, 1934, to Carl Rose and Ethel Paul Rose in the township of Morrison, Wisconsin. She was baptized and confirmed at Zion Lutheran Church in Wayside, Wisconsin. She also attended school at Zion Lutheran School. Joyce was a lifelong member of Zion Lutheran Church. She, she was an ever-faithful child of God. She believed in the power of prayer, saying her prayers every morning, every morning and every evening, as she taught all her children to do. On October 13, 1951, Joyce married her forever love, Eugene Perizek, in Mishicot, Wisconsin. They were able to celebrate over 71 years of marriage. In 1954, Joyce and Eugene purchased the Rose family farm in Morrison. Joyce was born, raised, and lived on that farm until 1977. At that time, they built a home across the road from the farm. Joyce was a dedicated, wonderful, caring wife and mother. She took care of her family while working with the household and farm. She loved plants and flowers. She would plant and care for hundreds of flowers and rose bushes every spring and summer. She had the most beautiful flower beds you could imagine. 
For many years, Joyce raised and grew African violets in her basement, where she had hundreds of varieties and plants. Joyce and Jean were also known for their fantastic outdoor Christmas lights displays. Joyce loved her family unconditionally. They were the most important thing in her life. She was so proud of all her children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. And she also enjoyed animals. She was always concerned about and cared well for her pets. Finally, on Sunday, March 3rd, 2024. God called Joyce home to rest in the arms of Jesus to await the resurrection of the dead. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give thanks to God our Father through Jesus Christ our Lord for our sister, Joyce, Mabel, Sylvia, Perizak. We join together in singing our opening hymn, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are reminded of God's promise in holy baptism for Joyce, that she was clothed with a robe of righteousness because Jesus paid for all her sin. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, 
we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Joyce and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, I invite forward those who are reading for us this morning as we continue with our readings, starting with Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. A reading from John chapter 14 verses 1 through 6. Let's not, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where, that where I am you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We read from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. We continue our service as we sing together, Just As I Am. to Paul and Joy, to Kay and Daryl, Glenn and Merrill, Jay and Patty and Dean, to all of Joyce's grandchildren and great-grandchildren, to all of her extended family and friends and church family gathered here today, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I wanted to share a reading from 2 Timothy chapter 4. Uh, as I think about Joyce and her journey through life, this verse comes to mind. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. 
Joyce ran quite the race, right? And as we hear that verse, we hear of the two ways that the Apostle Paul describes our time here on earth. A fight and a race. A fight is hard. A fight is painful. A fight takes enduring to get through. A race is exhausting. A race takes training for. A race is tiresome. Yet, along the way, there are checkpoints. There are milestones. There are things that we experience in this life that keep us going. There are people that God puts in our lives that support us, that encourage us. All of these things are certainly true for joys. You all are now blessed with the incredible memories that you share of those checkpoints, of those milestones. You can recall back to, to birthdays and anniversaries. Perhaps Joyce was there for the birth of grandchildren and great-grandchildren, or, or her reaction at what the message was, hey, you're going to be a grandma again, you're going to be a great-grandma again, and how she responded to that. You get to share those memories, and they last a lifetime. Even what we might call the, the regular, the routine, maybe the traditions that she had, that she, without even knowing, passed down to you, you cherish those memories as well. If you haven't already, I can guarantee you that one day you're going to be doing something. Maybe it is decorating the house for Christmas. Maybe it's baking or preparing a dish, something like that, and you're going to say this phrase. Oh, that's how Joyce always did it. That's how Mom did it. And without even knowing, she passed down a tradition to you and you will cherish that and remember that and live that out forever. As I think about those milestones and those moments, it is so applicable and so beautiful that we just heard the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes are how Jesus lays before his disciples what it means to be a disciple. Follow me. He called out to them. Follow me, he called out to Joyce. And they dropped everything, and they followed. And here's what the life of a disciple looks like. And you tell me if it fits Joyce. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Joyce was a selfless individual. I hear that in your words, Kay. I, I hear that as I hear of, of how Joyce was as a mother as a husband. I hear that in her Christian obituary and how she was so devoted to making sure the household was provided for and the farm was provided for and sacrificing her own time and her own desires so that you all knew mom's here and mom's here for you. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Uh, I've, I've heard from many of you that Joyce not only listened to or heard one sermon on Sunday, but perhaps two or three or maybe even more. That's what she desired. That's what she craved. That's what she hungered for, to be fed by God's word in more ways than one. Even in these last few months, I know speaking with you, that her prayers were still a significant part of her life. That hymns and songs and scripture verses were still evidently, evidently a significant part of her life. There is no doubt that Jesus reached out to Joyce and said, follow me, and she did. We see that in the Beatitudes. But yet there's something more significant that Jesus points out in the Beatitudes. Time and time again, 
Jesus says, Blessed are those, for they will inherit the kingdom of heaven. Joyce has fought the good fight. Joyce has run the race. And I know in the past year, the last legs of that race were difficult. They were challenging. Yet what encourages us through that fight, what carries us through that race, is our faith. And that will forever be with Joyce. Joyce had faith in her Savior Jesus that in all things, she knew what happens next. She has fought the good fight, and she has finished the race, and now she gets to rest. Now she rests in the arms of her Savior Jesus in heaven. She has claimed her inheritance, and it is good. She rests from her labors <clears throat> in the arms of her Savior Jesus. And that yet is not the end of the story. How appropriate is it that we're just a few days away from celebrating Easter, from celebrating the resurrection, the day where we come back from mourning and grieving? Jesus died, but he died that all of Joyce's sins and all of our sins would be forgiven. And as we return from our mourning, and as we return from our grieving, we go with Mary and the disciples and Peter and John to the tomb. And we're going to see the same thing that we see every year. We're going to see the same thing that we see every day. We're going to see the glory of God and that the tomb is empty. And Jesus lives. And because Jesus lives, we will be united with him in a resurrection like his. We will see Joyce again. And we can say that in full confidence. And may God continue to bless us with the faith that he blessed Joyce with as we follow him in hope until that glorious day of resurrection. In Jesus' name, amen. As we continue our service, I invite the congregation to please stand as we join together in confessing the faith that Joyce so regularly confessed using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord our God and Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, give to the family of Joyce and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and a sure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to the bereaved, that within the communion of your church, they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope, 
and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for Joyce and for all the blessings you bestowed on her in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with Joyce we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death, he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We commend our sister in Christ unto the Lord. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God, the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and keep you. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Amen. At this time, the congregation may be seated, and I'd like to invite forward those who are serving as pallbearers to stand in front of this pew here as we continue our service with the committal. As we prepare to commit Joyce's remains to its final resting place, we hear the words of Job chapter 19, again pointing us to that glorious Easter Sunday. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. That they were engraved on a rock with an iron pen and lead forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at the last on the earth. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know, that in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold and not another, how my heart yearns within me. Let us pray. Merciful Father and Lord of life, with whom live the spirits of those who depart in the faith, we thank you for the blessings of body and soul that you have granted this departed sister, Joyce, whose earthly remains we now lay to rest. Above all, we rejoice at your gracious promise to all your servants, both living and departed, that we shall be raised from death at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear the words of the Apostle Paul from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, as while we grieve, we grieve in hope. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord himself, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. We now commit the body of our sister, Joyce Perizek, to its resting place. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body by the power that enables him to subdue all things to himself. May God the Father who created this body, may God the Son who by his blood redeemed this body, may God the Holy Spirit who by holy baptism sanctified this body to be his temple, keep these remains to the day of the resurrection of all flesh. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, you destroyed death. By his rest in the tomb, you sanctified the graves of your saints. And by his bodily resurrection, you brought life and immortality to light, so that all who die in him abide in peace and hope. Receive our thanks for the victory over death and the grave that you have won for Joyce. Keep us in everlasting communion with all who wait for him on earth and with all in heaven who are with him. For he is the resurrection and the life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It is never too early to proclaim this truth. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Let us go forth in peace in the name of the Lord. Amen. Before we join together in singing our closing hymn, I would like to invite all of you on behalf of the family to join us immediately following the service all the way down the hallway in our commons area for a luncheon. Uh, at this time, I invite the congregation to please stand as we join together in singing our closing hymn, I'm But a Stranger Here. Amen. 